mics and water, so you can sit wherever you like. He apparently he's insulted that I didn't know his name right off the top of the so he's, he's I can't look at him. No. I got, I, it's just gonna be there the whole time. Sorry everybody. I just, I'm just gonna put a black bar over there, center my head out. We just got a curtain. So we just got a curtain here and put it across here so I don't have to look at his face. Yeah. I can hear him. I can deal with that. Oh, okay. Sure. So what's okay. going on? What are you guys up to? We're in Sacramento. For the first time? First time for me. First time for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yahoo! It's nice. So like, oh, this Sacramento place, yeah, we'll go there, we'll take a visit, see what it's like. Yeah, it's actually a really pretty city. I, I went out last night, I grabbed my beer at Burgers and Brews. Oh, Burgers and Brew, nice choice. Yeah, yeah. I got a couple of beers there, had a nice Moonraker IPA, it was very nice. Kind of local, about 20 miles away. And uh, yeah, then we proceeded to go out to a couple of other establishments. And then this morning I went to what is the best coffee shop uh, I've ever been to, at least for title, it's coffee, fish, and chocolate. Is that right? Coffee, coffee fish, fish and chocolate. Yeah, it's, it's the most weird name for a, uh, <laughs> for a coffee shop. I know, I know when the fish comes into it. I, I have no idea. I yeah, it's really good though. New since I've uh, been It works there on coffee and everything. Yeah. So, do you have to ask us questions, even though you don't know who we are? Are you, are you going to vanish? <laughs> you guys were some like ninja video game. Was that the? Yeah, some sort of ninja video game. Ninja These video guys game. might be able to tell you. No, so that's that's what we have here. We got we this got guy in the front. Probably. We've got a, a microphone here. Me. Yeah. This yeah. guy, yeah, this guy is representing. Is anybody dressed as Evie Fry? Oh look, yes we do. It's not bad. Ooh. So we're one Fight one. Fight Club Evie. One, I like one. It. Right. Yeah. We, count, we count them every con, yeah. and whoever has the most is obviously the most popular. But then we did a poll on Twitter and found out that I am anyway. No, you're not. <laughs> just more women vote on Twitter, that's all. Guys just don't bother. <laughs> so what, uh, what, what got you guys into the Assassin's Creed, uh, into the series? What, what brought you just another... Uh, the need to feed my daughter. Okay. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> Just another audition, and just like, just you're going to be in a video game. Audition, trying to put food on the table. <laughs> yep, that's all it was. Yeah, it came to me a, a self-tape. I didn't, we didn't know what it was for at the beginning. Um, so we just did, uh, we did tapes, and they didn't tell us what the project was. What just, was your first tape again? Was just you <laughs> doing action in the garage or something? <laughs> Not porno action, <laughs> just action oh, in the garage. garage. Um, right. Uh, no, yeah, I, I had to do... Um, a, a scene from My Fair Lady, at, but like a Lara Croft type scene. Right. It was very, very odd. And then the action they wanted. Yeah, then they wanted me to do some roles and kicks. Did you not have to do that? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, so they asked me to do the sequence of rolls and kicks and jumps around my living room, and I said no. So um, I'd already found Evie, I think, by rebelling against that. But I did do a couple of kicks, and then I just started the scene. So. They, they watched, watched the tape and realized that I wasn't going to do what they'd asked. And apparently liked that. <laughs> um, oh, I may as well tell this story. Um, <laughs> well, I always wanted to do a video game because I've always been into video games. Like from way back, from the ZX Spectrum, from the cassette tape years, to like Mega Drive, uh, you know, to PlayStation 1, 2, and 3. Had a PlayStation 3 until I had a daughter, and then my mom, uh, my, my mom, oh my god, my wife made me get rid of it. That is a mistake, you don't want to make. Sorry, Danielle. That was really You're bad. You're not my mom. Well, I don't know if that's bad for my mom as well. I know, I uh. Although she does tell me what to do. Um, so, and she did get rid of my PS3 because apparently, you know, young fathers are not supposed to have a PS3 in the house. And you're supposed to have a PS4. A PS4, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, I was working, I trying to figure out how I could get a PS4, and uh, I figured maybe if I get a video game, maybe I could get it for tax purposes and she can't complain. Um, so I did, I asked my agent to look out for a video game. I'd finished the series Lost Girl, I'd just come off five seasons of that, and I was like, I'd really love to do a, uh, love to do a video game. So they got me this, uh, this TGF, they call them, which is like a pilot for video games. So you do like a little 10 minute snippet of what the game's gonna look like. It goes to Paris, they say yay or nay. Um, and I did that, and I thought, wow, I did a really good job in that. And I didn't hear anything. 
And then about three months later, this guy called Ramiro called me and he was like, hey, listen, you know, we want you to come in and do, uh, do a little bit of voice on that thing that you did, but we're not going to ask you to play the part anymore. We just want you to do some of the voice on it. I was like, oh, all right. So I did that. And then they got greenlit and then they were casting for it and I never got called in. And in fact, I did get called in, but for a really, really tiny part. And I was, I was actually quite gutted. Um, so my dream of being in a video game and Assassin's Creed was out the window. And then I actually finished up Lost Girl. It was, um, it was just before I'd done my last day. They called um, about 9 p.m. at night, which really happens. And um, they said, we want you to come in. The Ramiro, the director, was like, why don't we pull in that Paul Amos? We can't find what we're looking for. And he was really good. So, which I'm amazed at. And um, so they called me in and I had 15 pages to learn. So I had three, uh, three scenes and they wanted me in at 9 a.m. in the morning because they had to fly back to Quebec. So I went in, I got off book, I did the three scenes without, you know, without a hitch and I thought, boom. Them. And they were like, oh wow, that was amazing, great, thank you very much, thank you very much. I thought, wow, come on, I've got that after that. And then I didn't hear anything. And then I, f I went on holidays with my family to Mexico, and we went to deep Mexico. So we were like in a, a place called Huatluco, which is right on the South Pacific. And um, of course, about a week into this three week beautiful family holiday, I get a call, and they're like, hey, they really like you. Um, can you fly to London tomorrow? And I'm like, what, London, UK? And they're like, yeah, 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 we need you to get on the plane. So we had to pack up our trip. I flew three flights back to get back to Toronto. Um, I didn't go the next day, I went the day after that. So I got everything together. Then I got on a flight and I went to London. And um, that afternoon I was going into the audition. I'm like, they're flying me to London, right? You've probably, you think you've got the job at this point. They're, they're spending money on you to fly you all the way there. So I get there and I get in the room and there's loads of guys. And I'm like, I can't believe it. They flew me all the way to London and there's loads of guys still auditioning. I'm like, this is nuts. So I go in, I do my 20 minute audition. I go back to the hotel, almost slip my wrists. And, um, <laughs> and then I have to wait the next day to fly out. So I fly out, you know, think, oh, I probably haven't got that. And then uh, I get back to Toronto, sleep the night, wake up in the morning, bring, bring. Hey, they still really like you. Um, any chance you can fly to LA in two hours? Oh my God. I'm like, LA in two hours? I'm like, oh, I've got to pick my daughter up from school. Uh, I don't know, I guess I can. So I arrange childcare, I get on a flight, two hours from the phone call, literally book it to the airport, get in at midnight. This get is when in. my work started. It is when her work started. <laughs> I get up the next morning for a 9.30 audition it was, it was really early, yeah, was and it? I get there and I'm like, whoa, they flew me to LA, I'm about to have got the job now. And I walk in and there's two other guys. Or, uh, <laughs> no, there was one other guy. There was one other guy. So, like, Victoria, I want you to read with these two guys we brought in from, uh, uh, like, from London and one from Toronto. And then he's like, uh, oh my god, I haven't got the job yet. So I do the audition and then I literally turn around because I had a con to do in Winnipeg in, in Canada, which Coincidentally, you cannot get to Winnipeg in Canada from LA without going back to Toronto first. So I had to turn around, 15 minutes, get to the airport, get on a flight, take a five hour flight back to Toronto, then take a three hour flight, 6 a.m. the next morning to get to Winnipeg. I did the con, I flew back Sunday night and I woke up. This is 10 flights in a week, people. This is how I got the job. How many flights did you take? No, not None. even one. No, I did take one. You did take I one. I did one to Quebec. So I wake up the Monday morning <laughs> and there's a little email in the, in the in waiting for me and it says, you're the man. And finally, I got the job. So, it's ten. A, it's a you earned it, yeah. And so I earned it. She I think we established Jacob and Evie before we even knew the characters, to be honest. Yeah. Because that is a Jacob put in the China shop, go around, do everything before he actually does the thing. And then I was just like, okay. Yeah, you could have just yeah. done this. Well, you could you know, just you, acted better, Paul. You know the reason why he came to LA is because I said, oh no, I can't come to England. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Did they tell you? Yeah, I was on like my eighth flight no. at that point. I didn't know anything about you. Yeah, you wouldn't have anyway, even if you'd known. <laughs> oh, fun. Yeah. It was fun. But so it was anyway, a fun process. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was fun. Yeah. The costume. The costume was a long, long period of time. I think my first audition was 
in the late summer of 2014. Yeah, I did the TGF in what was uh, the December of 2013. Yeah, it's a long process. And then we it. started filming it, and then, you know, once January. we got the job in the October, um, th then we filmed, I started filming in the November, um, mm. and then the January, because obviously I had more to do on the game than you Oh, did. yeah. So. <laughs> but then we had a really good DLC that you were just, just in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was fun. It was fun making the game. We had lots of some highlights of it. We, we had, we had, it was a long time, wasn't it, in the motion capture that we did. Six days a week we were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah six, uh, we were six days a week for four months. Mm. Wow. Um, which was, uh, it, it's actually, that's quite a lot for, for most people doing mocap in, in games. But we did a lot. <laughs> we really yeah. did a lot. And then we had all the promotional stuff in between that we had to do, all the, you know, the trailers and what. Was anyone at San Diego when we launched it and came to that panel? Was anyone there? No. I was there in San Diego. You were? You why didn't did bother coming to our panel. <laughs> you, didn't, you don't know why I am anyway. No, I, was, I, was, I was working in San Diego. You were oh. working? Yeah. Oh, right. What did you do for a living? Uh, well, it's San Diego, so I was doing a regular, you know, being a geek in what, San Diego. What, oh, you were, you were at the con just in Yeah, I was, I was actually working for the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. Oh, oh cool. So, what do you do for a living? What do I do for a living? I actually am a safety trainer. What's a cool. safety trainer? I train trainers how to teach people to drive heavy equipment. Oh, like big claws. Like a driving diggers, instructor for big yeah, machinery. Yeah, but I, I train trainers. I teach people how to do it. Hmm, so. interesting. We should probably ask, get some questions. Yeah, yeah. Has anybody any questions? We yeah, have this beautiful mic here that's just waiting to be used. Yeah, this, or you could just do some karaoke or yeah, go whatever ahead, they, they the want to do. Get your face right in that mic. There he is, the real Jacob Fry. With, oh my goodness, he's even got the... He's yeah. bound to have a question for me. We're no. both, actually. <laughs> <laughs> is there a traditional way of singing happy birthday, like in England? In England? That's a fascinating question. <laughs> um, I can sing it in Welsh. No, you don't want that. Um, <laughs> uh, whose birthday is it? Oh, um... It is yours! Tomorrow, actually. Tomorrow. Oh, what's your name? Paolo. Paolo. Happy Paolo. <laughs> but in England, we just sing the regular happy birthday. I haven't heard any different, uh, different happy birthdays Except in America. Except in Welsh, yeah. Not yeah. Irish, really. Yeah, and I'm not dressing up as Marilyn Monroe for you, mate. <laughs> as much as you want it to happen, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you, Paolo. Jacob. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This is a bit of a two-part for both of you. Um, both of you who have done lots of live action roles, what was it like doing voice acting? And what, what can you say is the difference between um, live action and voice acting? And have you ever considered um, doing more voice acting in the future? Well, first, I th we kind of did more live action with this oh, because oh, yes, yeah. everything that we did in the mocap studio, all of those cutscenes, uh, we, we filmed like a movie. Mm -hmm. um, so it was in a big padded cell that had 360 mocap, and um, the scenes were set up like they, they, they would be in a, in a film. The only difference was our props weren't real, right? <laughs> We had yeah. dots all over our faces, which generally would be makeup. Down. Yeah, and like my dog was just a a car, like a wooden box, literally. <laughs> they just had a wooden box for a dog. Yeah. yeah. No, so we did all that, and all the facial expressions and all the body movements of Evie and Jacob are mine and Paul's. So the whole performance, as well as the voice, is ours. Mm. So it was it was kind of live action, although we're not. The other week, I'm doing a new show at the moment, and I was running away from car bombs exploding. So it wasn't as live action as that, but it was definitely uh, lots of lots of action. Lots of action. Mm -hmm. See, she's got a new show. Oh yeah, yeah. She's we'll got talk a about new that. show. A new one. Um, no, I've done I've done a fair bit of voice acting as well. I mean, it's it's a totally different process, right? And we spent a long time in the booth as well, like th yeah, all the like gameplay th after that, yeah. the shouts and stuff like that. And apparently the horse shouts where you're saying, who's a good horse? Who's a good horse? <laughs> you are. Uh, I didn't realise that we weren't talking to the horses. I thought we were shouting at the people in the street. Oh, no. So everybody messages me and says, why does Evie not like horses? Well, I, I 
didn't deliberately do that. I just thought I was shouting, get out, the, you know. Oh, really? So you're being all nice to these horses, Horse. and I'm like a horse abuser. <laughs> <laughs> get out, you know, just screaming at the horses. Evie's a horse abuser. I don't think you want to say that loud, do you? Well, I love horses, so um, I don't want to say that loud. But this is what what I, does Evie do to these horses? <laughs> just shouts at them. Uh, just, oh, yes. Just shouts at them. Okay. I thought this was a family-friendly show. <laughs> Supposed to be. You're, you're, Supposed to be. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, so... No, that's all right. I mean, geez, great voice, man. There's a trolley that's out of control, and you can see it because you're on the railing above it with an extremely fat man. You know that you can, like, push the fat man over it and save the trolley and stop and save all the people inside of it from dying, but that would come in as Clive, and that would make you a murderer. Is it morally justified? Um, who's got the LSD? Because... <laughs> <laughs> can you repeat that again? All right, so there's a trolley spinning out underneath There's a trolley. Room. Okay, let's, let's slow it down. Is this in down. Assassin's Creed? No. There's a trolley. No, he's just asking a morality question. I know, I'm, I, oh. and I'm trying to gauge okay. exactly what's going on here so, so I can... So a trolley. Like a trolley that moves with yeah. wheels. <laughs> wheels, with okay, wheels. Okay, got you. Yeah. motorized. It's, oh, like how, how, how is it motorized? Is there an engine on the back or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, okay. there's a really fat man next to you on a bridge. And there's, uh, so where's the trolley, where's the bridge, and where the am I? The bridge is here. The trolley is, uh, goes underneath the bridge. It goes you underneath it. the bridge. It's coming to you. You yeah. go underneath the bridge. But there's an extremely fat man next to you. You can push him over the railing, and he's fat enough to stop the trolley. The engine won't blow up. Can't get through that shit. So, like... Wow. So I want to push a fat man off a bridge <laughs> to stop the trolley. Why do I need to stop the trolley? Because there's lots of people inside and they'll all die if you don't stop the trolley by pushing the fat man over the bridge. <laughs> Does Remember he... when I told us earlier we asked sane questions? Yeah. This is not one of those. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I, I, would, um, uh, I would probably push the fat man over. Uh, right? But I wouldn't, I wouldn't make it obvious I was pushing the fat man over. I'd sort of mildly nudge him and go, well, you'd have to nudge him quite hard if he was fat, so you probably, it would, I don't know what you do. I know. So I don't know. Um, I, I'd probably push Maybe the guy over. Maybe you're asking me to? Yeah. I, I honestly, I can't not even understand the question, like, oh, the, the wait, scenario. The scenario is, we're on a bridge. <laughs> we're on a bridge. Any, ex oh any God, excuse to stand on the table. <laughs> any excuse. They're all going to die. Sorry, mate. I'm gonna have to push you over. It's all right. If it's you, then yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you the fat? I man? just saved a hundred people. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's talking about. I would do that. Yeah, do great, that. Great. We might need two of us to push him over, though. So. Yeah, we're only little. As long as we have our assassin power, we'll do it together. Okay. Thank you for the most ridiculous question I've ever had in my life as a con. Uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, moving along. Welcome to the show, everybody. <laughs> uh, Had to happen in my first anime show, didn't it? It usually does, and that's not the weirdest question. That's not had. the weirdest that's question. Good, okay, bring it on. Was a good, no, no, God, don't okay, what's, no, what's up? Don't give it to me. Give it to me. Please, no. What have you got? I'm trembling. <laughs> Hello, don't poke the bear. Greg, and uh, don't worry, this is not a morality question. Okay. Question. This is uh, an Assassin's Creed question. Yeah. So, uh, hello, uh, and uh, I uh, love Syndicate and my uh, very favorite Erida's Black Flag. Uh, Can you leave, please? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even really an Assassin's Creed game, anyway. It was like it was it was a pirate game. But it had Matt Ryan. Of the the <laughs> Matt Ryan. Who cares about Matt? Ryan? Yeah. Well, it's just another Welshman. Uh, Paul. No. What again? Well, okay. Uh, well, um, I was. Uh, sorry. Just. Uh, That's okay. Well, uh, so, what's the question? What, what do you want to ask? It uh, is this something about syndicate? You can ask about Black Flag. We probably won't know the you answer. You can ask about Black Flag. Well, it's uh, actually more of like the. Uh, well, it's actually more like a future Assassin's Creed game. Okay. Well, um... You know the Ubisoft snipers are out there. They'll take us, they'll take us out if we say anything. They are, they're in the right And also, we always. don't know anything. Uh, <laughs> We're not allowed to well, know. Well, anyways, I'm uh, hoping that Assassin's Creed will do a uh, 
Wild West as theme. Oh yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. Isn't it? like a Westworld, Back to the Future Westworld Creed. Westworld Assassin's yeah. Creed. Uh, I would like that. Well, Back to the Future. Uh, yeah. Well, it was actually kind of more like a or like a Magnificent Seven event. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That would be cool. Like a, any Assassin cowboys. cowboys. Yeah, like yeah. Assassin's yeah, Creed. Yeah. Woo-ha. I, yeah. I like that. I like this idea. Assassin's yeah. Creed. Yeah. Yeehaw. <laughs> and, and, uh, well, that's what uh, I would uh, do if I got to do my own Assassin's Creed game. Well, I think that would be really cool. I think you should pitch that. Tweet Ubisoft right yeah, now. Tweet, tweet yeah. Cowboys. Wild, Wild West. Cowboys and Blades. Assassin's Creed. Uh, <laughs> cowboys and Blades. Cowboys and Blades. Yeah. A funny, you're a Black Flag fan. A funny story about Black Flag, about the uh, the developers. Um, they were they were testing out Syndicate, and um, there was this one guy. And he just obviously wasn't having a good time, right? So they go up and they talk to him, and they're like, "Are you all right?" And he's like, "No, I'm I'm not really enjoying this." And they're like, "Why not?" And they're like, "Because there's no swimming in it." And uh, and they're like, "Oh." Oh, okay. Well, um, yeah, we had a little bit of swimming in U uh, in Unity. And he said, "Oh no, I just I just love the swimming in Black Flag." <laughs> so, because what I would do is, if I needed a boat to go and do something on the other island, I wouldn't get that boat. I'd swim there. <laughs> this guy, they, they're basically the developers met their worst nightmare. This guy spent an hour tapping X. <laughs> <laughs> to make the guy swim to the island. And then when he completed his thing, he swam back. <laughs> but it's it possible to, to do, um, just in case you wanted to try it. Yeah, but gee whiz, come on. Yeah. Have you done that? You just go out and swim if you need to swim. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I kind of done that. Yeah. Oh, great. Anyway, that's my black flag story. Well, cool. Well, thank you. Nice. Thank you for your question. Yeah, thank you. We'll thank let them you. know. Have a great convention. Thanks, you too. <laughs> Peace Hello. out. Hey, how you doing? Hi. I was just wondering, do you guys have any thoughts or concerns or are you excited about the movie? Because historically... You have a really great movies. voice, by the way. Thank yeah. you. They and you remind me of one of my favorite animation characters, but I don't know if they had it over here in America. Yeah. Penny Crayon. Oh. Did you guys oh. have that? The, oh, yeah. the children's show with the... Yeah, I used to, I loved it. Like, you've got the berry and the cool Here glasses. We We're just showering praise. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. And Penny Crayon is, she's cool. I like Penny Crayon. Yeah. Carry on. Carry on, sorry. sorry. We interrupt. Oh, <laughs> uh, they historically don't go very well. The movie's yeah. based off of video games. Yes, I know. So more happy or more concerned? Wait, didn't you see it? You were at the premiere. <laughs> <laughs> I got to see some of it. <laughs> um, no. Uh, oh, is that because you had your show? You had to film? Yeah, I'm doing my new sci fi show for, which we'll talk um, about. In a here's, bit. here's my take on it. I, f I figured that that movie might not work because I think that the assassin, to condense the assassins or create the Assassin's Creed universe in an hour and a half, is not really doable. And it was either going to come off as convoluted or just downright crazy. Um, and I think they needed more leading time, and I think a series would have suited that project a lot better. I think they would have got a lot more longevity out of it, and I think that they would have found an audience. It should have been like a Netflix show um, as a series, but who knows, they may do that in the future, but for the purposes of a movie, I just can't see how it, how it, how it would work. Have you seen it? Have you? No. no. I'm gonna Have people in this room seen it? You've I, seen I, it? Yeah, a lot of Hands up who really enjoyed it. I did not. I think it still keeps uh, a lot see, of the... It's about the 18% of good reviews no, on Rotten like Tomatoes. <laughs> They're all in this room. Yeah, when you see the splat, I'm not gonna spend money to watch a movie that got a splat from Rotten Tomatoes. Splats, you know? I mean the splats. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, and Fast is great, right? To, to yeah, Marion Cotard and, and Michael Fassbender, I think, are two of my favorite. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so this question is for both of you. Um, when you were doing the mocap, what was the most difficult thing for you, and what was the part that you had the most fun with? The kissing scene. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult yeah. and very fun. Um, no, what else? Um, what was it? Well, it, it was a long. It was a long period of time to have mic packs and a helmet. For me, after a few hours, it was quite physically exhausting. 
Um, and even, I mean, I, I do a lot of sport and, and keep fit, but it was to do acting and running around and do that with those that weight on your head and on your back. Um, after a few hours and six days a week doing that, it, it really stretched. I mean, the, I had back muscles I'd never known about after that, yeah. after doing six months of that. Um, so I think, yeah, physically it was, but it was so much fun to do. You didn't really notice the physical exhaustion until you got home and was like, oh, every day. Yeah, the most difficult thing for me was that um, I had a really good time doing the job, like creating the character. And, uh, you know, and then at, towards when we started to, to finish our mocap session, we had to go into testing the game, which was playing the game. But the game wasn't finished, it was broken. And I don't know if anyone has an experience of playing broken games. It's probably the most frustrating thing you'll ever do. I haven't played Assassin's Creed Syndicate because this kind of put me off the game. So, if you've got to think about it like this, I spent four months doing this. <laughs> trying, to, trying to be an assassin, right? When you broke the game, Jacob would be doing this and then he would freeze <laughs> and then he do, would do this. <laughs> and then, so the gut, then he would do this. <laughs> and they would basically maneuver him <laughs> around the city of London like that. And then sometimes they would just go through walls. <laughs> yeah, does this look like an assassin to you? <laughs> That's also what he did in motion capture, and they had to do a lot of re-edit. <laughs> that was fun, thank you. <laughs> she's running away, she's like, that's done, I'm done. Get me out of it. Sometimes uh, Jacob turned into Evie in those things as well. <laughs> or oh, half of Evie and half of Jacob, we, we blended into each other. It was a very odd experience. <laughs> um, I don't know how to word this exactly. What, this is more for Evie. Okay. Um, what would you say is Jacob's most annoying habit? Just one. Hey, it could be any. You, you, you can name a list. No, um, Jacob. I think J Jacob as a character has so many like sweet elements as well, but he just doesn't know how to be. So he kind of just goes in for the hard kill and, and then thinks, oh, I shouldn't have done it like that. Or I shouldn't have, but you never, you never see that part. Like they never show that part of him. But I think, it, I think it would be like, oh, I shouldn't have said that, or like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. but he just, he just goes in for that. So I think that's annoying because for Evie, she thinks everything through. She gets stuff done. Yeah, she gets stuff done, but she's also very methodical, and he's not like that. He gets stuff done in a very different way, but she thinks differently. Like it's all planned out and organized. So she gets super frustrated with Jacob, who just does not plan anything, <laughs> and he still succeeds. But he just doesn't have a plan about it. So I think that was is probably Evie's, if Jacob's most annoying uh, thing. Hey, right, thank you. Thanks. Good question. You're welcome. Uh, howdy. 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 <laughs> Let me just. Um, so before I actually start my question, I know that experience. I tried the game on my old computer, and the entirety of the world was invisible. <laughs> I had to do the opening sequence completely by guesswork and looking at objective markers, and then I decided I have to refund this. And I haven't, I haven't been able to finish the, or play the game. Syndicate? Yeah. Oh. It was Ubisoft. Is their hardware requirements are insane? So I've never oh, been able. Oh yeah, to... that's why right. you play on PC. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's heavy on the PC. So I have a new PC, but I haven't gotten to buy, buy the game well, again. Get around to buy it then. I will once once I can afford it again. <laughs> Just um, get the DLC, don't worry. Well, about you can afford to come here. <laughs> but I, but uh, I, my, my question is, um, I assume that you are, are both both very knowledgeable of the the entirety of the series. You're assuming. You I'm assuming. So never assume. Deep, yeah, how, never assume in life. How deep does your knowledge go before I ask you the question? Oh, are you going to try us? Are you well, gonna, you have to understand that we're, we're actors as well. So yeah. when we get, for me personally, I don't. I just research the character that I'm doing. Yeah, let me just qualify this. That's with. just that's that's my thing. Um, 
and research where we are and what we're doing. And, and to be honest, like the black flag and, and the unity and all those things for the process of what our specific job was, it wasn't necessary that we knew about those worlds because Evie and Jacob wouldn't know about those worlds. Right. Do you see what I mean? But yeah. we obviously did look at the franchise and thought, oh wow, this is, you know, this is an adventure, this is missions and yeah. how it's established. But our script was, as you know, very different to the unity yeah, stories. And we, could have, we could have gone in that game knowing nothing. Yeah. You know, about the world. I mean, there's the, the animus and the, you know, the sort of the white room that's, I guess, had its incarnation. Yeah, so that had to be explained, isn't it? Yeah. That had to be explained so that we kind of understood what that is. But that in itself has changed, like, and through the, the course of the games, right? Yeah. The feathers and the handkerchief. <coughs> the feathers and the handkerchief and all that sort of stuff. And, and I'm aware that, you know, that the universe is huge and there's all these, you know, there's all kinds of Easter eggs and all kinds of stuff that, you know, you, sh you kind of know, but for, uh, for us, I mean, we could have gone in there and not known any of that and still done the same job. Right. Yeah. yeah. See, my question was going to be um, how it felt going into the performance knowing that you had to follow up on such iconic characters as Ezio or Edward Kenway, uh, if it was Dante. Or Arno. Or, yeah, it's you know, funny because... I know it was interesting, but not like as much of a compelling character. No, I know, it's just a... Did you you, you were well aware of the brand, though, weren't you? Yeah, I was aware of the brand. I mean, like I said, you know, I, I've always had um, computers and game consoles, so... I remember playing the first one, and I was just, it was a bit repetitive. It just wasn't really, really... It was a bit shit, really. Um, <laughs> it was a good concept. I mean, it was a good concept, but it was essentially Prince of Persia, right? Which is going back to the question about movies is, you know, Prince of Persia put a death to that franchise, which I actually like the Prince, Prince of Persia franchise from when er, in its earliest incarnation. Um, and then that movie died and then they were like, what do we do? We can't do this game anymore. So they basically created Assassin's Creed and it's, the, it's, it's Prince of Persia. Um, so if Assassin's Creed the movie kills Assassin's Creed, then what will Assassin's Creed become? Oh. <laughs> I, last thought before I leave, I think that the movie was probably going to be used as a gauge for how many people would be interested in a TV series, and seeing it flop is probably killing the aspects of that. I would have really uh, loved to see that idea. I don't know, that's... I'd that, also that, like to see it as an animated gauge, series. I don't think you could gauge a series from, from making a movie as much. I mean, if you made like a, a pilot movie on TV or, or like, you know... The thing is as well, the people, yeah. that go to, the people that go to the cinema now, in comparison to the people that sit at home and watch Netflix, they're the same people that are gaming. So it's not really tapping into the same, or, I don't think, the same yeah, audience. It's not the same to audience. To gauge it. It's a different medium. But yeah. great question. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank nice you. To nice to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you for not embarrassing us with crazy questions. <laughs> <laughs> and showing that we know absolutely nothing about the universe. <laughs> I, I'm talking about this universe. Hi. Uh, good day. So, a question for each of you. So, what's the one talent that you've heard from a friend, read some in some text, or seen on screen that you wish you'd seen in person? Talent? What do you, what do you mean? I'm, like I'm, a talent show? I'm trying or to piece it together. Or a talent that you heard a friend tell you? What's like the most random talent my... that we've been impressed by? Just oh yeah, they wish, you, they wish you could see again, but in person. I wish I had psychic abilities. Um... Well... What do you wish? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a family friendly show. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the obvious that you clearly a might need. obvious talents <laughs> that I wouldn't mind seeing in real life um, <laughs> that I shouldn't talk about because it's a family friendly show. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I just have a basic question. Have you got Evie and Jacob dolls? Yes, Woo! actually. He's got Evie and Jacob pop dolls. Oh, Those are hard to get. The, uh, they have the Evie ones? Yep. Oh, wow, they did their research, finally, I that's cool. All the did you bring yours? I did bring a few as well, yeah. I brought a few. I did. Great, yeah, we uh, like that. But my basic question was just, uh, doing voice work and stuff like that, you end up getting a lot of stories of like, can you say this line louder? And you're like, God, can I go any louder? And I was just curious if you guys have any funny interactions of like, mm. I don't know, in jokes or going off book or... No, I do. We stepped to the script, don't we, Colin? Oh, you have quite to. Well. Like, they, they just won't let you go off. 
um, you have to be you have to do exactly what they want. I mean, and you know when you do a voice uh, a booth session, you've got a director, you've got um, you've usually got an accent coach in there, and then you've got the people on the other line wherever they are. So you'll have the voice director. It's quite an intense. Like it's, there's a lot of people that yeah. it has to filter through before they give an okay before even. You know the lines make it to the to, to the game, and so often they'll come back and they go, "We want you to do these lines again," and we, you know, with this emphasis or that emphasis, and you know, it was, it was a thousand-page script that we got going into the yeah. booth. So it's like it's. So we were in there, and it was it's like just a like thousand pages, right? Like, it's four not like, hours at a time. It's like three every line, three times, three different ways generally, um, and then you've got the onos, which is the. Oh, those were All fun. that stuff. Well, they, they, I told you about that when they said that uh, to, because they'd only done male voices really before, they hadn't had a female major um, female character to to have the Onos with. So I kept getting things like kicked to the groin, and so they were like, "This is the example." Like, Ugh! and I was like, "Ah, oh, it's not quite the same for a girl." What like, what, what do you want me what to is do? It like when you and so there was like. <laughs> well, play the game. Apparently, if you kick, if you Come dare, on, it's it's you can hear it. Have your three different versions. But the, the guys were like, uh, you know, who was like Richard. There was like four guys in the booth with us, and they were like, oh, uh, oh, well, just do what you think. Because <laughs> it's a, it's a low sound. When you hit a guy down there, it's like, oh. I can't believe we're doing this right now. But, <laughs> but what's yeah. it like for girls? Is it more high pitched? Is it? Like, I'm trying to think. What it'd be it's like, just like. like... <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, sounds like a I'd girl having like an orgasm. <laughs> I don't um, think so, but... <laughs> wow, how did it get so unfamily friendly? Thanks. Thanks. Sorry, children. Um, oh, it's an anime convention. That's why it got right, like yeah. this. Yeah. They so that South was an Rick. interesting part of doing the voiceover. Still haven't got it. Still haven't got it. Play Come the on. game. Everybody I don't wants... know. Come on, we all want to hear it. I don't know. I don't actually know what I did. <laughs> I'm I tried. A, I'm sorry, I I'm tried. not doing that sound. <laughs> Lou, Luma's got his camera on. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. You are very welcome. Oh no, Luma's filming this. Edit what I said about... <laughs> I edit the horse abuse. Yeah, the horse abuse. Uh, anything bad about the film? Uh, you doing this all around the kitchen. Oh no, that's fine. You keep that in. That's comedy. Hi, how you doing? Hi. Have we got a ten Templar in the building? No. No? Tired. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. So, this question for, is for both of you. And what was your, like, favorite memory from when you were working with the Assassin's Creed Syndicate pr production? Favorite all-time memory? Mm. I quite like doing the, uh, you know, the final sequence, sequence nine, when uh, she has to dance with Staric. Uh, learning that dance was quite a challenge for me. I'm not really a dancer. So trying to do that in motion capture was quite fun and interesting. And then doing the voice at the same time in the cutscenes. Um, that was that was fun. I enjoyed doing that. Yeah. Well, I was probably taking the piss out of Victoria. <laughs> the whole, yeah. The that whole was, time. That wasn't my that favorite. That was awesome for me. Um, um, no, I actually had a lot of fun on that project. Um, was, uh, like, uh, we'd ne neither of us had done a video game before, so. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a very technical process. Let's do like two aerobic sessions a day, which were always quite fun. Yeah, because well, you, you have to do this thing where you sort of sync up, right, at the beginning, in the morning and uh, in the afternoon. So what it is basically is that they, they just, they, they have to punch your, move, your body movements into the system and then you're synced in with the system and then they know where you are in the 3D space. But it was kind of, we'd always do it to like different songs, you know. Sometimes, sometimes we go to Spice Girls. Sometimes Spice Girls. Sometimes Lionel Richie's Hello. Oh yeah, that uh, was good when yeah. we did it to Hello. It's really slow, be, like we were. Yes, yeah, Hello. <laughs> Isn't me. And then we had to do like these kind of things on the floor. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> <laughs> like these to Lionel Richie show. Hello. It then, kind of yeah. ruins our whole assassin <laughs> thing. And then two. And you had to finish off with a fire. Press ups? Yeah, fireballs like this. Press ups on the floor. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it was fun. So, yeah, think about that and Lionel Richie and that's how random it was and how unlike assassins we were. Yeah, and I, I was so unlike an assassin that eventually I created the, a character which was the sassy assassin. <laughs> <laughs> I put the sass, the ass, and the sand in the assassin. Woo! <laughs> yeah. That wasn't my yeah. favorite. That wasn't my favorite. <laughs>
That was mine. I used to love the Sassy Assassin. And you also started a musical in that a Sassy Assassin. Yeah, Sassy and we had musical. Yeah, we did have the musical. <laughs> I am civilian three. I am civilian three. Hey, who goes there? I am civilian three. Yeah, next question. Oh, so, yeah. Next version. Thank you. Hi. Um, so every Assassin's Creed has a historical figure, and there's so many in Syndicate. Yes. Um, is there any that you enjoyed um, reading lines to, like Charles Dickens or the Queen, uh, Queen Victoria. Victoria, or yeah. any? One of them. <laughs> um, I really liked Alexander Graham Bell. That stuff was fun. Um, he was you just fancied Alexander Graham Bell. What was his name? Mark. Oh, Mark, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't fancy Mark. But he was fun to do scenes with. Um, yeah, we, I like doing that. We had quite a lot of stuff with him. That was good. And um, who else? Oh, well, I loved working with Sam Crane. He played um, Abilene. Abilene? Yeah, Sam yeah. was awesome. Sam was really great. Um, yeah, we had a lot of Brits on that one. Um, who came, who flew over. The Charles Dickens and Charles Darwin stuff was so short for us. Like, we were only in, like, with them for like half a day, so I always think about how the time that we spent with the actual actors. We had actors. Karl Marx as well. Yeah, he was good, he was yeah. good. Yeah, they were, they were, they were alright. They were alright. Who was your favourite then? Who was your favourite? It was my favourite. I don't know. Well, historical character. I liked Alexander Graham Bell. Well, we did most with Alexander Graham Bell. <clears throat> That's yeah. probably why. And Mark was, 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 was good. Like, yeah. he had a good character. And they were, you know, and the they let him use his Scottish well. accent, which yeah. was nice, because they were going to try and get him not to do his Scottish accent. Which is we were crazy. like, come on. No, he sounded good. He was, he was Scottish. Good. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. And nice outfit. Yeah, I love it. Evie Fight Club. That's cool. I'll be in her full outfit tomorrow. Oh, I can't wait. Why, why not today? Oh, uh, we're saving it for the big day. Oh. I like it. <laughs> Hi. Um, Sorry, in my personal opinion, Evie is more of the stealth character and Jacob is more of like the head-on fighter. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you were to get into a fight, do you think you would be more of a stealth or a head-on fighter? <laughs> oh, I'm bullying Personally, as, as ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm bullying a China shop for sure. No, I, just, I, I, I don't think... the shit out of everything. <laughs> <laughs> just go in there, arms and legs flailing, hey, whatever, <laughs> whatever I like can. Yeah. Um, Smash some shit up. Yeah, I, I, I would like to be like Evie, but I don't... I don't think I have the patience to be that stuff. Yeah. I'd probably do the same. I don't know, as I'm getting older... Kind of a I'm, bit like that. As I'm getting older, I would, I'm having more patience to be stealth. You're mind. a little strategic. But generally... I mean, you, who, who, was at, who was at the premiere of the movie? It wasn't me, was it? <laughs> I, had to have, I went with Luma. Took oh, him, took Luma took assassin. you as a date. Yeah, oh. it was my date. You, you were working on him all that time. <laughs> Just for the movie. Yeah, that was it. Just so it'd be more better company than you. Oh, all right, thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, before I ask my question, just wanted to say I actually like the Assassin's Creed movie. Oh, good for you. Good, that's good. All right. Uh, I haven't seen enough of it to judge it yet. <laughs> good for you, man. Saw it twice. Good yeah, for you. Yeah, that's cool. Right. It's a lot of money um, down. I wanted to ask if you had, um, would you want to be able to have the abilities and weapons of the character you play? If you could have them, would you like to have them? Yeah, uh, yeah would I, like I mean, a hidden blade. Yeah, it would make and going to work a lot easier. You know, <laughs> yeah. booking just jobs, out. auditions. Just, just, Shooting shit across the city and doing that. And yeah, that up. Is. There'd be no more need for Uber. No. no. We just. Yeah. 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 And then, and if an Uber taxi driver was going the wrong way. Hit him like. <laughs> Where are you going, man? Wasting my time. It took you ten minutes to get here. The app said five. And you went round and round. Why did you go round and round? Why did you go round and round? System? What are you doing looking at the map? Yeah. Drive the road. Do you even know where you are? And you drive past me. Are you from this city? No, you're not. Are you? Get out of the car. I'll drive. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get it. So that's, that's how we do it. That's how, I love how that's how we would use hidden plates. <laughs> on Uber They're drivers. Just stab yeah. Uber drivers. <laughs> I mean, should, you should off. definitely edit that out. I mean, they are the Templars, let's when be honest. When he gets put away in like in two weeks' time, from we'll like having an assault in an Uber. <laughs> I definitely agree. It'd be fun to jump around, do the... And Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know. Definitely. Thanks. The Spider-Man assassin. Opening your mail cans. Opening your mail oh, that would be good. Yeah. cans. You don't have to look for the one oh, when I put it in which drawer. Most of the time it's just junk mail though, so it's just crystal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you doing steak? You're back, you're back. You just just, just... It's got another question. <laughs> No steak would well, be a lot easier. Uh, like the, uh, would you get a steak hidden blade though? Maybe you would just get one that was actually a, a hidden blade, but with the steak. Maybe like, you could have like what's the like the Swiss Army knife hidden blade? So you have all the different things on the hidden blade. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it could like be like a Swiss screen. Army Swiss Army hidden blade. <laughs> you like some nail clippers, just oh, oh. yeah. For those <laughs> We need to invent this. Why are they not selling these in the company? I know. They, they, they're doing themselves a disservice with this. Swiss Army. It's, it's, it's a limited function. Sorry, we're interrupting. Go on. Sorry. Say your, say your question. Sorry. <coughs> well, uh, like the uh, previous guy, I uh, did like the Assassin's Creed movie. Oh, you waited yeah. till somebody else said, didn't you? Yeah, and, then, and then you decided uh, to say. Yeah. <laughs> in numbers, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm uh, also hoping that they'll do more Assassin's Creed movies and um, hopefully they'll make them uh, a little longer, longer and, uh, and and yeah, I would love to see an Assassin's Creed Netflix series. series. <laughs> so, um, uh, so um, anyways, um, about the Assassin's Creed movies is hopefully Hey, well, I kind of think that they might be the uh, next uh, Resident Evil movies because, well, those are uh, ending pretty soon. Um, um, okay. I mean, I do, uh, and I uh, do love the Resident <coughs> Evil movies too. Mm -hmm. no? Assassin's Creed with zombies. Great, actually. That would be great. Well, you've already got a built-in weapon. You're gonna get that close to a zombie? Yep. That close to a zombie? You have to. Have you not watched The Walking Dead? The cane or the cane thing? There's a little distance on it. Yeah, I know, but I feel like this goes in and out quicker. The cane thing, does it? Does it really, does it get a bit stuck occasionally? I mean, I didn't personally use it. Oh. <laughs> cool. So, cool. Thanks. So we just established Assassin's Creed zombie movie would be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. well, 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 uh, yeah. uh, well, it could make a good DLC. Well, yes, DLC. there you go. Friendly. There should be more DLCs. Because the new game's not coming out until what, next year? Or oh, the end of this year. Yeah. It's a long wait. It's a long wait, like, actually, for the. They've been patient. They've been it's been patient. only like two years, right? Mm -hmm. It's a long time. Yeah. But then GTA fans wait that long, so, and they take longer over their game. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. All right. We've got a question. Uh, what you got, man? Um, I was just wondering for the uh, grappling hook scenes. Did you have to mocap suit that? We had stump stump people to do those. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we and I think that was just animated anyway. No one did, no one did it. Yeah, the only real physical thing that we did was really the train sequence at the oh. beginning, where we jumped to the trains. Literally, we just jumped from one um, part of the floor that was covered in blue tape to the other <laughs> part of the floor that was covered in blue tape. That's about as physical as we got. Actually, they won't let us do a lot because of the insurance purposes on, on, on those things. I mean, it's the same with movies now. They don't really, um, at TV shows, they don't let you do a lot because, I mean, you break your leg or you do something. They can't injured. replace they can't, the, they can't yeah, replace you. The cost of replacing you is immense, right? It's not like, I mean, maybe if you're like Harrison Ford and you say you want to do the stunts, but I mean, you know, it's, it's usually within it's the very safe It's probably more than us. Yeah. Yeah, it's insured. Yeah. But no, we didn't. We didn't do no, that. no, Sorry. sadly, as much as I wanted to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they wouldn't right. let me. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Hello again. Hello. Hello. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay, the question for each of you. Okay, let's uh, for each of you. Let's say that your house is on or place of residence is on fire. Is this another moral uh, question? No, 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 it's not. It's not. It's not moral. All right. I can't I'll take it. Give it to me. Just <laughs> on, what is it? No, no. Say that all the people, animals, and plants that weren't there are safe outside, but you can only save one inanimate object. What would it be? My pin blade, really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. My plastic one that they gave me. <laughs> yeah, would, that reminds would, me of my time on Assassin's Creed that I loved so much. I would do exactly the same. Nah, I, just, I, I would just, probably get my... Well, what would I save? If you could only save one, one thing... One object. Well, one thing from our hotel room or something? I would go back It'd and be get my some. most expensive be my of purse one. with my credit cards. <laughs> my, what? my credit cards. Oh. Credit cards. Are my credit cards on me? Well, Have we, I got money on? It, well, we are, oh, we've already got them on. The credit cards you can replace, though. Well, no, it's, it's the, the, the earth ending. It. Actually, I don't even need them if the earth is ending. It's the no. earth. Oh. No, it's not. No, it's not ending. It's What's just happening? like everything in there is about to burn to the ground. Oh, it's just a fire. You, you can, everything yeah. can be replaced. Yeah, but I'll just get it, myself though. out. Can it? That's the question, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. What cannot be replaced? Maybe pictures of your family? You can reprint them. You can reprint them. <laughs> <laughs> Almost what about those Facebook. 1970s ones of like your dad? <laughs> that everybody's probably taken a picture of and put it on Facebook. Not sort of <laughs> <laughs> All right, my most expensive bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> because you need it watching your house <laughs> And me, I, I, I don't know what I would say. Um, and I, I, all my family are safe, they're okay. okay yep, of course. Okay, well, it's an inanimate object. Is your mother an inanimate object? <laughs> so <tough>. Is she? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, I don't have anything that's... What's that? What about you? I don't know. I don't know what I have. What would you say? Huh? If it's in my house, I, I have letters. I have Just letters. Let's reverse this. What's, what about you? What would you say? I'd say this thing. What is that? Lizzie, my game, what is it? Uh, my game console. Portable. Oh, your game console. Oh, yeah. What is it? Uh, so it's on the Nintendo 3DS. Oh, someone uh, left yeah. one of those in my car. I have a, I, one of those. 4DS. I don't know whose it is. Okay, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you can just play video games and forget <laughs> that your house is just burned down. Right, I get it. Just escape. Hi, how That's are you? Just find yourself. Yeah, good thing. Excellent. My thought was, in question was, is there a character um, in anything that you would like to play? I've been watching Westworld at the moment, and I really a love... A robot? Yeah, I would like to play a robot. I would you like to do play... that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Dolores in Westworld, I just, I love that character. I think that was, that was a really cool idea. Well, I know it's being brought back as, as from the movie, but um, I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying those kind of hybrid human robots. Nice. That would be a fun character to play. Mm. You? Uh, I don't know, I'll probably... It'd be fun to be on a, a show like Black Sails or something. Just because, I mean, it's pirates, so that's fun. You'd make a good pirate. You'd have to grow your You'd hair. You'd have to swim everywhere. You'd have to grow my hair. You'd have, have, have a wig. <laughs> All right, I think we'd probably do a wig. Um, or you could. You, you could. You can go that route as well. Some you'd of them. Good with long hair, like some long plaited Johnny Depp hair. Um, and then you get to film in really nice exotic locations. Sure. And it's a Jerry Buckheimer show, so you get paid really well. So yeah, there's something like that that's looking rather appealing right now, although it's coming to an end, I think, Black Sails. Well, maybe you'll, you'll come up with the Nice question. Version. Yeah, nice. I like that. Yeah, yeah cool. Well, thank you. Good to be a pirate. Yeah, that's good. It'll happen. <laughs> well, maybe you'll create one. Hmm? Maybe you'll create your own. Yes, version. I mean, they're always in very I right? also like, yeah, the character I'm doing, I'm upset about that, but the new show that I'm doing is, it's a cool new action character. What is the it's show? Fun. Come on, everybody knows. They're going to know about it because like it's a sci-fi show. It's a sci-fi show. It's written by Orson Scott Card, who wrote Ender's Game. And it's a new, um, it's a new uh, series that's going to be on Netflix next year, at the end of this year. So it'll be fun. It's a cool... Uh, Cool thing set 400 years in the future, and we have lots of drones and cool, cool things that's happening. Was yeah. it definitely on Netflix? Yeah, going on Netflix. What it be called? It's called Extinct. Extinct. 
to oh, extend you. Yeah. Hey. Um, thank you. My question is for uh, Evie. If uh, how? It's actually Victoria. Victoria. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> for video speaking. Oh, okay. We don't oh, have sorry. any. We, we're nobody else. We're just okay. And I, I'm nobody. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, it's, but it's okay. It's a the wonderful DLC, cost. There's a, oh, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Way too expensive. Um, <laughs> but uh, between the DLC, there's like a 40 or like 20, 30 year gap or something like that. So Evie's very jet different jet, yeah. from 20 year old young woman to being much older and facing Jack the Ripper. How yes. did you differentiate between the two? Characters in your yeah, that's a good question. And actually, um, when they gave us the DLC script, I didn't know until a week, maybe less than a week later, that this was 20 years on. Maybe my history needed to be a little bit better. Um, but I didn't realize that Evie was going to be now 40 something. Um, so it was kind of a quick, quick process to kind of digest that and go, oh, um, Right, well, how am I going to do this? And I thought, well, you know, I look at people, I'm, I think myself, you know, I'm not there where Evie is in the DLC, um, but how much would I really change physically and vocally? And I didn't think it would be a great deal. So she, I did, I did edit a little bit. What's he, is he making weird faces at me? Yes, yes, he is. You can see them. <laughs> it's because he didn't really have a process, did he? He just came in and did things. I just do what I do. Um, but yeah, I just altered the voice a little bit and, and the... You just did the same thing, didn't you? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Just a little, just a little, little subtle things, but there was yeah. nothing... I mean, I did something different for the older Jacob. <laughs> Sat down and didn't move. <laughs> <laughs> I complained. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> that they wanted... Oh, you have no idea? Um, no idea. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. Hey, somebody with a hidden blade, I see. It's not that hidden. It's, it's the obvious blade. <laughs> and he did the assassin. I like that he took his head down before he spoke to us. Assassin's I know, style. I liked it. I liked like the Eevee trailer, that. Yeah, yeah I'm digging it. Yeah, speaking of Jack the Ripper storyline. Yes. In your guys' opinion, how good is Jacob Philo in an eye patch? Um, well, yeah, see, that's. Yeah, that's this is how you get into your pirate, into pirate gear. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, that, that, that was a really odd one. Because there's a reason why, remember? Because when you snap in the eye. Yeah. Yeah. And um, totally beat that was a lot worse. Before. There was an original script that has a completely different ending to that one, which <laughs> is why I complained so much. Um, but um, yeah, it was, it, it, it was weird. It's, it's, it was an odd one, right? Seeing yeah. like the main protagonist of a game that you've been playing for like 40 hours and 60 hours, and then he's like just beaten really easily by Jack the Ripper. I was, I was kind of sad and disappointed at the end because of what happened. So. I know. Were you sad, were you sad when we... Were like, but we did yeah. kill him. We did kill him. They killed no, him. We, did. Oh, she we did. defeated him. And it also made it out that, like, Vi Vi you know, Evie... Not Victoria. Evie. <laughs> see, even I get confused. Evie was harder than Jacob. Because she could well, take Jack the Ripper and Jacob couldn't. Oh, that was unfair. I, think, I mean, I think that was accurate, but... <laughs> oh, Jacob should have been able to take it, man. <laughs> Jack the Ripper was... Way it was hard. Should have been the other Although way I round. Don't, yeah, yeah. She really should have, right? No, that would have been messed up if he be, like, after killing all them prostitutes and then killed Evie. Like. And then, no, no, he just had her, like, prisoner, and then Jacob saved her. Much better DLC. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think it worked right. <laughs> <laughs> Much more screen time for Jacob. No. <laughs> And more food on my daughter's table. Right? Well, I got some food on my table after doing that. <laughs> yeah, you did. So that was good. Well, I, I think with that, I think we're... Uh, Are we done? Yeah, we're, we're, we're good. We're, well, thanks, guys, for coming out. That went quickly. Go come downstairs. say hi and come and bring your pop dolls and we'll sign yeah. them. Yeah, bring your bodies, whatever. Thank you so much for being here, guys. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Woo!